Greetings. Uh, this is the voiceover for PowerPoint 3.2. There's one more section to do, and that wraps up the um, material that you'll be responsible for. We're going to do section 3.3. We'll do that next. Make sure you watch this video. Recall that you won't be able to watch that video from this video presentation. You actually have to open up the PowerPoint and watch that video, but I have links to that video. All right, section three, two, averages and variations. An average, obviously, is an attempt to summarize a set of data using just one number. As some of our examples have shown, an average taken by itself sometimes isn't, isn't very meaningful, especially if you have extremely high values or extremely low values. These numbers are often referred to as outliers, which can distort what's actually taking place. So that one number sometimes isn't very helpful. And what we're saying here is we need a statistical cross-reference that measures the spread of the data. How close are all these values in my data set to the middle number mean? The range is one such measure of variation. It's so easy to find. It's simply the difference between the largest values and the uh, smallest values. Many times you walk into a store, which you probably couldn't have done in months, but Let's say you're interested in purchasing a new bedroom set. You go to a store, a furniture store, you simply ask the salesman, hey, what's the range of the prices? So you may say, well, they range from a high end of 6000 down to a low end of 700 You know, the range is you know, it all it gives you an idea of what's going on, but not a great idea. Take a look at this. We're going to have the mean, uh, the next few slides, we'll talk about the mean prices of a watch at three local uh, retail outlets. And what I'm saying here that the mean of these watches that I want to describe is $325. Um, in the first store, you see the prices of the watches. They range from $330 all the way to $630. Second store, $100 to $575. And the third store, these watches, $200. The most expensive is $450. Notice the range in the first set is $300, but the mean is three and a quarter. The range is a little lower in the second store, but notice the mean is still three and a quarter. The last store, the range is only 250, and the mean is once again three and a quarter. So all of these stores have the same mean price for these watches. Look at the spread, you know, from 30 to 630, or from 100 to 575, or from 200 to 450. So that mean isn't telling me a heck of a lot. It's telling me the average number, but it's not really representative of the uh, prices of these watches, how close they are to this middle number of three and a quarter. All right, in stats, the sample standard deviation, all right, standard deviation and was known as a sample variance, are used to describe the spread of data about the mean, how close or how far are these numbers away from this middle number. All right, in this case here, you see the mean is for all three at three quarters and a quarter but the standard deviation which i'll show you in a moment for the first set is large 335 notice it's given to you by s of x that's the calculator so i mean that standard deviation is that large number the second set of data only has a standard deviation and i say only of 261 smaller than the first set and as you may assume the standard deviation for these four prices is only 119 the reason being is that these numbers, the two, 200 and 250 and the 400 and the 450, are closer to this mean number, this middle number, and not as much. Uh, these here are further away, and this price here, you know, these prices are really spread away from the uh, mean number of three and a quarter. Standard deviation and sample variance. I'll tell you up front, the calculator will give you the standard deviation. And I'm going to show you how you find the sample variance. Once again, sample standard deviation, sample variance are used to describe the spread of data. Next example shows how to find these quantities by using the defining formula. No, there is no need to do it pencil and paper because your calculator will take care of it. Most recess the computations are easier. And using the calculator is the easiest way. While the variance is, a use, is useful in a mathematical sense, it won't actually give you any 
information you can use. For example, if you take the sample population of weights, you might end up with a sample variance of 9,801 square pounds. That may leave you scratching your head as to why you're calculating in the first place. The answer, you can use the variance. The answer is that you can use this variance to calculate the standard deviation, which is a much better measure of how the spread of weights are. Here's the key. In order to get the standard deviation, you take the square root of the variance. So in reverse, if you know the uh, standard deviation, you would square that to go back to the variance. Once again, your calculator will give you standard deviation. You will do the inverse operation. You will square it to go back to give you an answer for the variance. All right, helpful video. This comes from Khan Academy. Talks about the spread of data, finding rate, finding uh, standard deviation, and also variance. Here's these formulas. Here's a formula to find a variance. S squared, which is S stands for sample variance, is equal to the summation of all your X scores minus your mean scores, the summation of all those differences squared divided by N minus 1. Find the standard deviation. You take simply the square root of all that, but we're not going to get involved in this. There's no need of doing anything fancy on the paper. Why I had you rent a calculator because you're going to make use of it. Kind of makes sense. All right. Same formulas is a basic example. It says, hey, consider this set of data one, two, three, four, and five. Well, the mean is the average is three. If I add up one plus two plus three is six, and nine more is 15. 15 divided by five numbers, the mean is. The range in this case would be the high number, 5, subtract the small number, 1. The range is 4. But the idea is you're saying, hey, calculate the standard deviation. Now, if I was doing it pencil and paper, I would take all the raw scores, subtract the mean, square that, and continue to do that for all the values, 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, and the 5. And then I would divide this by uh, the largest number divided by the subtract the smallest number, and then take the square root of all that. And the answer comes out to be 1.58. All right. Easy enough to do because there's only five numbers. But you can imagine if you had a set of 20 numbers, would you want to be doing this pencil and paper? Finding the mean, subtracting it from the value, squaring it, summing those all up, and dividing by how many numbers you have, five, subtract one. Which gave me four. All right. So I'm saying show the calculator. So in the calculator, what I would do is I would go to Stat, Edit. I, here again, I've been telling, telling you about using List 1 and List 2 because you don't want to forget where your values are. So I would input in List 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, I've got two decimal places here. No big deal because I know my answer was correct in two decimal places. You don't want to have nine places. Two. I've been telling you right along, set your calculator on the mode to either two or three places. All right, so I put the numbers in list one. I went back to uh, stat, and I arrowed over to uh, one variable stat. With the calculate, excuse me, one variable stat, and my data is in list one. Notice there is no frequency. All I had was one list. I click on calculate, and that's what I'm looking for, S of X. It's called sample standard deviation. This is also a standard deviation, but we'll never use this sigma X. We're always going to use S of X, sample standard deviation. As you can see, it was 1.58, just like it was doing it pencil and paper. Now we come to our frequency distributions. We saw this back in... Uh, section 3.1. Whenever you're given a frequency distribution, you'll have two columns. You'll have classes and then you'll have a frequency. Just the way you did it when you found the mean. You've got to do this. Well, first of all, before I get to that, here he is doing it pencil and paper. All right, there's your midpoint of that first class followed by the midpoints of all the other classes. You've got to find the midpoints, even if you're doing your pencil and paper. Here's the frequency. He's multiplying the frequency times the raw score, and then he's squaring it. And no, we don't want to do all that. All right, we don't want to do that. Here's another example. Here again, whenever you're, you know, I, I'm being redundant here, but I've seen people just get, be quite honest, once again, I'll tell you, just get lazy. When you're given a frequency distribution, you've got two columns. 
with the classes and the frequency, you have to, have to find the midpoints. The midpoint of this first class, 10 plus 13 is 23. Half of 23 is 11 and a half. Notice the range, excuse me, the class width here is four. The difference between anyone higher and anyone next higher, or anyone lower and the next lower. The difference is the class width is four. Once I calculate this first class midpoint, all I have to do now is just keep adding four. Now, I'm going to put these in one list, preferably list one. I'm going to put the frequency in another list. You've got to find the midpoints. All right, there it is. I put my midpoints in one list. I put my frequencies in a second list. I went to stat, calculate, one variable stat. Notice my list, my values are in list one. My frequencies are in list two. Here again, I... They don't have to be L1 and L2, but those are the two easiest to remember. Now, where did I put it? I put it in 5, L6. 1 and 2 is fairly easy. I hit calculate, and I come up with a standard deviation of 3.24. Now, what if, let's play what if. What if the question had said, um, I want the standard deviation. Oh, by the way, I, I want the variance too. All right, the calculators do not have an option to give you variance. If the question asked you for variance, you would calculate the standard deviation, which in this case is 3.24, and you would square it. Easy enough to do it on your calculator. Hit the square key, or just take 3.24, multiply it times 3.24, squaring it. There's obviously there's a little square key in that first column on your calculator. It'll take that and square it. That would give you your variance. Squaring the standard deviation gives you variance. In business, uh, standard deviation is used to measure the spread of data. Um, it's used um, in huge number of applications. In finance, it's used to measure volatility. It's often used by investors in, to measure risk of a stock or stock portfolio. In manufacturing, it's a way of use, it's used in quality control. And in polls and surveys, it's used to measure the level of confidence. Okay. And hopefully that helps.